going on, everyone? I'm at the LA Auto Show, and I'm in the Kia booth with the brand new Kia EV9, which is sort of like one of the only big three-row crossover full EVs on the market. So I thought we'd do a quick preview, walk around the EV9, and see if it's something that, you know, Megan might be interested in in the future. Keep in mind that Megan is an EV skeptic, okay? Apologies for the noise, but there's a Bronco testing course literally right over there where Ford's showing off Broncos. So Megan is an EV skeptic. She does not want a full EV because she doesn't like to deal with the recharging and the potential threat of running out of electricity. And we want to look at the EV range of this thing, but also kind of the practicality of it as a three-row SUV. So let's take a look around. Let's look at the styling, look inside and out, and see what you guys think of the Kia EV9. All right, in typical Kia fashion, first of all, this thing looks pretty fantastic. So if you think of what would an electric Telluride look like, well, it would probably look a lot like this, okay? So the Kia EV9 wears Kia's sort of new EV design language, and we're seeing this on the EV3 concepts over here, and we're seeing it on the EV4 concept, and now we're seeing it on the EV9, and we sort of previewed it on the EV6. So I think that they're creating this sort of kind of cool, cohesive EV design language for Kia that sets it apart. They look different, but not weird, right? This is a handsome looking large SUV, and it's hard to take something in the EV space where people are sort of making EVs look weird intentionally and, and different, and Hyundai and Kia are making them look different and cool, but also still kind of mainstream. They're not weird for the sake of being weird. And I think the EV9, especially in the sort of traditional large SUV space, definitely looks the part. Now let's go look at the rear and check out cargo space, and then the interior, interior space, do the all-important six foot six guy sitting behind himself test, and then we'll kind of see what we think overall. All right, so I pulled up one of the third row seats here so you can get a sense of the space back in the EV9 or in the cargo area, the EV9. Now I'm six foot six, so that gives you an idea of kind of the space relative to a really tall person. If I sit here, you can see that there's a little bit of space behind the third row, but obviously with the third row full you have quite a bit of space. I don't really think that the third row in this is intended for, you know, like full-size adults. Kind of like in the earlier video I did here at the LA Auto Show, I was in the Lexus TX, and that thing has an enormous third row. This is a sort of more compact vehicle than that, and I don't think the third row is meant to hold adults, just children, right? You can see that clearly. But when you fold the third row down, which is quite easy, you get a reasonable-sized cargo area. I'm guessing somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 cubic feet, probably, which is pretty good for this class of vehicle. It might be more than that, okay? So it uses its EV space well, but let's jump into the front and see what the sort of interior design is like in the EV9, how much space someone who's six foot six has, and then I'll jump into the second row and see how well I do sitting behind myself. But for cargo carrying capability, this thing is perfectly in line with what you'd expect from a three row crossover, like, I don't know, the Telluride. There. Now, let me adjust the seat to a normal human being driving position because somebody has laid it back like they're getting ready to go to the drive-in movie theater with their girlfriend or boyfriend but first of all the seat is incredibly comfortable okay you've got this little thigh bolster that you can raise up here and if i move the wheel back to where i would have it this is pretty much the driving position for someone my size, okay? So i'm 6 foot 6, i am in a perfectly comfortable driving position. Actually, if i'm being honest with you It's really good. This is an incredibly comfortable seat. You've got Hyundai and Kia sort of dual screens in one single pane. You've got a simplified uh, dash here. Climate control hard points. There are hard points for temperature adjustment, but a lot of it looks like it's going to be controlled through the screen. You also have some ambient lighting coming through. You've got some interesting textures over here. You have the semi-open floor plan that Megan loves from the Ionic 5. She loves that. She loves the spaciousness of the interior, and this thing has it. You have a retracting cover over the cup holders here, which are quite large. They could probably hold the Stanley. You know how Megan feels about the Stanley. And then you've got your wireless charger and a mm, okay center console space. But this is a very pleasant place to be. It doesn't feel like this is as big of a vehicle as it is. This sort of feels like you're driving uh, Ionic 5 or an EV6 when you're actually driving quite a sizable SUV. You got some of your heated and cooled door controls, heated steering wheel. So this one, this GT line appears to be fully loaded, but it is a very nice interior. But let's see if I can fit behind myself. All right, so getting into the second row of the EV9, you can see 
I can, oh, power seats in the second row. That is nice. Now this power, well, this power seat, oh, there we go. It's all the way back. So the power seat is all the way back, but my knees do not touch the front seat. So I am sitting behind myself. I can't adjust the seat down, but I do have headroom. I also have a vent right here and separate climate zone controls right here, as well as this has a double panoramic sunroof. So I've got a panoramic sunroof over me in the second row and a sunroof in the front row. I guess, is that really a panoramic sunroof? It's more of like just two sunroofs, right? But I got a large one over me here and I'm pretty comfortable. And because I'm not using the third row because I don't need it because you only have two kids and one can drive, I can recline this seat a little bit and I'm pretty darn comfortable in this thing. So for space, the Kia EV9 is pretty fantastic and I have heated and cooled seats back here. The materials are pretty good. I've got peasant blockers interesting textures. I got armrests. I like having an armrest in the second row. So this is a pretty great place to be if you're tall, six foot six sitting behind six foot six. So regarding range and the powertrain, there's some good news and there's some bad news. And you're gonna have to decide if the good news outweighs the bad news. So the good news is that this makes 379 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. And with the all-wheel drive system, it can get to 60 miles an hour in four and a half seconds good news. Also, it's on an 800 volt architecture and can recharge from 10% to 80% in a claim 24 minutes. Now I've had the Ionic 5 multiple times. I've had the Ionic 6, I've had the EV6 and Kia and Hyundai's claims are generally pretty accurate. So that's believable. All right. It could take up to 350 kilowatts on a fast charger. So that's appreciated. Also good news. Let's get to the bad news. The bad news is that this thing has a maximum range of 270 miles, which means in day-to-day -day driving, you're probably not gonna quite see 270 miles. You're probably gonna be more around the 250 mark. And if you live in a colder climate, obviously that makes it worse. But 270 miles in a vehicle of this size is only decent. So you have to ask yourself, who is this for? Well, I think I have a little bit of a thought. I don't necessarily think, despite the way this thing looks, that Kia is targeting families like ours saying, feel free to take this thing on a road trip. Now I know what I just said, it recharges fairly quickly but I don't really think that's the intended function. I think they're saying, here's a large family vehicle that you can drive around your city and recharge every night at home. And you can take your kids to practice and you can take their friends to practice and you can fill it with your stuff and you don't have to worry about paying for gas and it's fully topped off every night. And so you have this large, comfortable, nicely appointed vehicle that is fully EV, not necessarily going on long road trips. It is capable of that, but that might not necessarily be its function. And if you're like us and you're in the market for a, another kind of family SUV, this, I don't think this would necessarily be your primary car. Now, what if you're saying, well, that's dumb, right? Like you'd have a big SUV and then you'd have this large EV. Well, is it though? I mean, the price, if it's not that much more than some EV competitors, like the Ionic 5 or the EV6 and the Ionic 6, like it just depends on what you need. And I think that's where people go a little astray when it comes to EVs, is they compare them directly to a gas car. And then they act like gas cars don't have compromises either. If you buy a midsize SUV or a full-size SUV or a pickup truck or a sedan, they all come with their own set of compromises. You're focusing only on the fuel consumption. Well, this EV is incredibly spacious, very luxurious, has tons of options, tons of amenities. It just happens to have a different powertrain, right? So you got to sort of put it in practical terms, but I wanted to put that out there. I don't think 270 miles of range is enough myself. I think that's a little on the low side. I literally was just over at the Lucid Air booth where they debuted the Lucid Gravity, which goes 440 miles. And they're saying that the lowest trim model will come in in the sort of 80 to $90,000 range which if you option this thing up, suddenly doesn't feel like that big of a stretch, right? And so I think you gotta put everything in perspective. This technology will mature out, the infrastructure will mature out, and like all advanced technology, it is not as efficient when it first comes out and becomes more efficient over time and better over time and cheaper over time. So I just think that the EV9 is a great swing from Kia. It might not be perfect, but it's definitely worth considering if your use case sort of fits it.
So should you buy a Kia EV9 in this GT line trim? Well, I think as I said in the powertrain section, a lot of that depends on what your intended use case is. Let's look at it as an SUV. As an SUV, it's spacious, it's well appointed, it's loaded with options. Apologies, there's a Kia video game right next to me. Not exactly the ideal location Kia for your games next to your you know, new debuted model that people are making content over. Come on Kia, let's use our heads. But anyway, if you, like a well-appointed SUV that can go super fast with 516 pound-feet of torque, 4.5 seconds to 60, there is definitely, definitely a reason to buy this thing. I mean, that is pretty incredible. Not really a front trunk though. What is going on, Korean automakers? Why can't we seem to figure out the front trunk thing? But if you are looking for a fully electric large SUV to replace your family SUV, I'm not sure the EV9 is for you. 270 mile range is just not enough to replace the family SUV. So keep that in mind when you are looking at this. This is not a replacement for your, you know, Toyota Grand Highlander. This is something different. And if you're into something different, you might be into the Kia EV9. I can tell you right now, unequivocally, Megan would not be into the Kia EV9. She would love to drive it probably for a week. She would love to have it in our driveway as a test vehicle, but as a replacement vehicle, I do not think this would be for her. Do I think it's for some of you guys? Maybe. Why don't you let me know in the comments if you think you might be the target market for the Kia EV9. And let me know if you're not, why not? And save all the EV power trace up. I'm curious to know if you are or aren't from an actual buyer standpoint, okay? So until next time, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, all that kind of stuff. This has been the LA Auto Show, an absolute blast. Don't worry, Megan will be back in the video soon. Someone has to hold down the Ford at home. All right, we'll see you in the next video.